Hi guys, uh, welcome to year 12, but before I start rambling on about all of the advice for you, could you do me a favour? Could you pop over to the year 11 version of the video and just comment on the video with your advice to the year 11? So, what should they know? What do you wish somebody had told you at the beginning of year 11? Is there anything you wish you'd done differently? Is there anything that you wish you'd change? Is there anything that you really, really wish somebody had told you? So please just do me a little favour, just go and give the year 11 some advice because you remember what it was like at the beginning of year 11, you, you didn't listen to me when I told you, well some of you listened, not all of you listened, um, when I told you to start revising, so I'm doing the year 11s to start revising, um, so please, maybe if you tell them, they'll listen to you, because you've just done it. Thank you so much for commenting and then coming back and watching this video, they will really, really appreciate it, but on to you now. Um, school is going to be very, very different when you get back. There is going to be a very, very different atmosphere. The atmosphere in your year 11 classes was probably quite intense, probably quite pressured. Um, class sizes were probably quite large and there were some people who didn't want to be there and maybe some people were a bit disruptive. It is completely different at A level. You have chosen these subjects. The teachers know you've chosen these subjects. Chances are the lessons are going to be a lot more relaxed but also a lot more intense and I know that I know that sounds like two things that shouldn't go together, but I know that for my A-level lessons, it's more like a conversation where we sit around chatting, we all sit around tables sometimes, we all do problems together. Um, you know, we have a lot more fun with things, but also things happen a lot more quickly. So, like, what used to be a whole lesson for GCSE, it's probably now like the starter for A level, or maybe like the first 15 minutes of the lesson. And you're gonna find there's a lot more content covered in the lessons. And so say you have an hour lesson, maybe you'll set half an hour, 45 minutes homework for that. On top of that, it is expected you're going to be doing about an hour's worth of independent study as well. So if you have three lessons in a day, that's three lessons, three hours of independent study, and then three lots of homework for you to do as well. This is why you have those three periods. They are not for sneaking off to the shops, having an extended lunch break, or just sitting around chatting and reading books. They are actually study periods because you guys have a lot to study. The expectations are also going to be completely different. Um, I know that in my year 11 classes, sometimes some people didn't hand in homework, and I kind of like expected people not to hand in homework. Why all, all six formers hand in homework? It's just like, if you've chosen to do the subject, if you need it to get into university, it is expected that you will do the work. There is no, there is very little slack in A level. We don't have time to go over stuff because there is so much content to do. And unlike GCSE, we maybe did it over three years, we really only have two years for A level. So the expectations, the amount of work you're expected to do, the time that you're expected to do it in are also going to be a lot, lot higher. But we are still really, really early on in the course. So there is still time to change your mind. Um, there is still time to think carefully about your subjects. Have you picked the right subjects? Have you picked the right combination for what you want to do at university? Have you picked some facilitating subjects? There is still flexibility of moving around this early on. Um, it's going to be so individual that the best person to advise you on this is going to be your teacher and your head of sixth form or your head of college. You need to think about your extracurriculars carefully. Um, it is really, really important that you have extracurriculars because First of all, they're going to look really good in your UCAS statements, but it is also good for your health, your mental health, to take a break and do other things. So make sure things that you pick um, take up an appropriate amount of time. I once had a student who um, wanted to be a vet, very, very competitive, she needed to get four A stars. Um, at A level, there are basically no other options, but she spent her whole of her weekend guiding. Like, it took up so much of her time that she didn't have any time at the weekends to study. And you have to make a judgment call. What is more important, spending time on your extracurriculars or getting the grades so that you can decide, um, so you have a choice of which university you get into. And if you make the choice that you'd rather be spending your time doing your extracurriculars, 
that's your choice there's no i'm not gonna look down on you no one's gonna tell you that's the wrong choice that is your choice to make but then you have to be realistic about what grade you're going to get at university and you're not going to get the A stars that you need to get into veterinary school. So carefully pick your extracurriculars. It is important that you have them. It is important that you take time for yourself, that you take time to look after your mental health. But things that are so all consuming, it doesn't leave you time for study. While you might have been able to get away with that at GCSE, A levels are such a massive step up from GCSE that you probably won't be able to get away with it then. And it is such a massive step up. The, the content and the expectations at A-level are really, really far from GCSE. And I know some of you, maybe the first week in, maybe two weeks in, are going to be sitting in the back of the classroom thinking, what? What have I done? Why? Why? What's going on here? That is a perfectly normal feeling in year 12 to be feeling overwhelmed, to be feeling freaked out, to be worried that you picked the wrong subject and that everyone else in the class is understanding stuff and you're not understanding stuff. Everyone feels like this. I promise you, everyone feels like this. Um, because it is such a shock to moving into year 12. Um, and if you are feeling like this, it is really, really important that you find somebody to talk to. Whether it's your friends, be honest with them. But sometimes if it's hard to admit that you're struggling with your friends, talk to a teacher. All the Samaritans of Childline are just waiting there to talk to you. It's really, really important that you keep on top of stuff. Um, like for DCSE, very, very soon I will have revision guides, free revision guides over my website for biology, chemistry, hopefully physics, maths, geography, psychology and sociology as well. So I'm really, really um, working hard on getting A-level content up for you this year. So um, keep on top of stuff, use revision guides when they come out. I will tell you when they come out, I will tell you when they're ready. Um, there is a little bit of A-level stuff up there already, but not much. Um, keep on top of stuff, use the videos, use YouTube. Um, if you want, if you do find yourself really, really struggling, think about getting a tutor. I know loads of people didn't have them for GCSE and then when they need them for A level, whether it's just kind of like one or two lessons as a top up or whether it's a regular fortnightly or weekly thing, or whether you want to have like two of you sharing one tutor, that is also fine as a way to cut the costs. Um, there is a link over on my website where you can go and find yourself a tutor. Um, so good luck guys. I know uh, GCSEs are hard. I'm going to be here with you the whole way through your A-levels. I promise we can do this. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too quick.